back, everybody. Are you ready to paint one last fall scene? <laughs> it's going to be winter stuff pretty soon. I, I enjoy fall. And I like the first part of winter and then <laughs> after um, hmm, mid-July, I can have spring. That's as far as I want to go. <laughs> so I thought we could do this beautiful scene from Pixabay. And I love the streaming of the uh, light through the forest. And I thought it would be kind of cool to show you how I go about doing that. So I don't know if you've wondered yourself how to do something like that. So get your paints ready if you want to join along. Um, I will put this up on the community page. So if you're looking, did you get snow yet? Uh, no, not yet. Thank goodness. It's actually quite warm here right now. I think it's supposed to be 16 Celsius. So that's pretty warm for November because we're used to snow <laughs> by now. Um, no, no, it never stays in the first part of November, sometimes into the mid-December, but we do get snow, but we haven't gotten any yet. I saw Devin got, yeah, well, Devin, <laughs> she's uh, in the snow belt country area where they get the cool down right away. So that's not surprising. It's typical for them to get snow in October, early October. I've even seen it in September there. So I'm going to put this up on the community page for all, all um, members on Patreon and on my Join membership in YouTube. So you can um, download that if you want to paint along with me. And... I'm just going to put this up so I can have it in front of me. Actually, I should put a piece of tape. And uh, that's not a good one. I always find these tapes don't, don't keep them, don't hoard them, because they do end up uh, sticking together and you can't un them. I don't know, maybe there's a special way of having that unstick. I don't know. I haven't found it, but yeah, it's not fun. All right. So I did get just a short, um, I did this on the weekend. Xandra, I see you saw it. This was really fun. I really enjoyed it. And this is on the membership uh, on YouTube and Patreon. And I did get some happy mail from Lena in Denmark. It's always so much fun getting happy mail. I love it. It just brightens your day, right? So she gave me some nice um, notes, which I can use. And a little booklet for writing things down. Those are always handy. Postcard with a little note on the back. And I thought she was playing a joke on me. <laughs> She's a practical or a, a prankster, you know. And um, apparently this is a pencil. But if you plant it, it'll grow. Yeah, your mermaid grow. I've seen a few of those. They're so cute. I'll have to do some of those and uh, show you. So, yeah, just stick the end in. It's got seeds in there. And I'll grow a plant. I don't know what kind of plant it is. But apparently... I can so how how perfect 
is this. I'm a gardener and I'm an artist. So <laughs> would you ever have dreamt something like this up? No, I don't think so. This is genius. I really love it. <laughs> and I'm going to put it in a, a pot and see what we get. And I'll show it to you when it starts to sprout. <laughs> I thought that was so cool. So I got to put this in my um, journal. And then I got some nice, very pretty. I love that color of pink. Very muted. Simple. But these will be great in journals. We're using for um, decorating certain, um, like making clothes, that type of thing. Um, that's going to be a future, probably, uh, membership thing. I got some ideas. So, when on... We also did this on the um, Blooming Artists. And this is a little paint your day or sketch your day type of uh, book in your sketchbook. And it's got little hidden... Um, areas for journaling. Plus you can journal here. These were just ideas. And that's for the top level if you're interested in uh, more journaling ideas. All right, so let's get started. I'll, I'll actually bring you guys in a little bit. That's good. Now, oh, I guess I should keep this and show you what I'm doing. So, we're going to look at this and decide what do we need to do first. So, the first step is to look at your reference photo or whatever you're using for reference. And we will start from the back and work our way forward. So in the background here, I'm seeing like past the trees, it's almost a white color because of the sun being out. And then as you go down, we're getting into uh, kind of goldy greens in here behind all of this. And then in here, we've got some more on the uh, brown side up to about here. But there's a little bit of blue on the very top. So we're just going to put a really rough. Oh. You guys still see me? So we're going to put in a, a rough background because it doesn't have to be um, like clouds and all that because it's all covered with everything else. So let's see. I think that's good for you guys to see. I'm going to have my palette over here so you can see what I'm doing. And I just use coffee lids. And they're great because I can reuse them. I don't have to throw anything in the garbage, which is good. So we're going to need some white, uh, yellow, and a little bit of blue. So... I'm going to get cobalt blue. I'm just using um, craft paint. You can use artist grade if you want. And greens. What green? I think I want some of this, some of this, and yellow. Okay. 
And wait, I have actually some just gesso for my white. I don't want to use an acrylic artist grade um, because it will leave a shine. It's a little different and it causes your papers to stick together if you fold like in a journal or that type of thing. So I'm going to use gesso and it's just as good. Okay, so I'm just going to put some colors on my palette here. Some cobalt blue. And some white. And some yellow. Better shake that. Yellow. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of, let's see what this is. This is ivory black. I want to use up. It's starting to go. It's getting a little chunky. Roll my sleeves up because I'm notorious for getting my sleeves <laughs> dirty. And I have my paintbrushes in front of me and my water. So I'm going to put this aside. So we're just going to do the background right now. I can put it on my go. And I'm going to take a fairly big brush because we're, we're not really looking for anything um, detailed. We're just going to put a background on. You want some paper towels because you don't want to put a wet brush in your paint. All right, so we have, like I said, a bit of blue on the top. And it's more or less a white color, but you can add a little bit of yellow to it because it's the sun rays and it's reflecting off the leaves in the forest, which is causing it to look a little bit on the yellow side. And so I'm going to take some blue and some white on my brush. I'm just going to do this. I'm not worried about the color too much. Because, like I said, we're going to be uh, painting over top of this quite a bit. So. Blue. You can make it as light or as dark as you want. You don't have to stick with the colors that are in the uh, photograph. You can darken them or lighten them. It's just a reference. It's not necessarily uh, copy your photograph. All right, so then I have a little bit more white in this area, and there's a little bit of blue in there. And I'm just lightly sweeping it in to that blue. Okay. Now, while that's drying, what paper are you using? It's just a file folder that I've gessoed. Thanks for asking. Forgot to say that. Um, the forest floor is going to be a dark color, and then we'll add the light colors for the leaves and such. So we'll probably put that on now and then add a little bit of yellow or and white as we go up. So the forest floor can be um, this black here with some yellow in it. And depending on the black you're using, you now I should have 
I'm going to put some blue in there and maybe some red, maybe some red. I'm going to make it kind of a brown color. So if you mix your three primary colors, you'll get a brown. You just have to play with it a little bit. Okay. Oop, I just lost my picture. Go and get it. I want a fair amount of it. And I want a little bit of more black in there. Squeeze that a little bit more. And that'll darken it. Okay, it's kind of a muddy color. I'm going to take, um, oh, I got to get the picture. Okay, so we're going to show you. Um, so about from hmm, a quarter weight down your pitcher, you can go across with that color. Don't worry too much about any of the other colors. We'll add that after. So there's a little bit of a hill. We'll put that in. And then, and I'm not going to worry about if there's paintbrush marks either. And then... I'm going to add a little bit more black. I wonder if I get ugly black. Let me see. Black green. I have black green here in craft paint. I think I'll use with it. It's a little darker. So uh, it's dark in here, but there is a little bit of sunlight. <clears throat> but that's the... Um, shine from the tree leaves so we can always add those on after so it's mostly dark up here and then hmm, kind of stops about there and let's see this tree here, you could put that in. It's fairly dark. And it goes right down to the bottom of the page. So I'm just gonna throw that in like that. Thanks, uh, Xandra. Uh, let's see if I can boot them out. There we go. Thanks, Sandra. Yeah, they're still around. All right, so we have the blue sky in here. There's quite a bit of blue sky there. Let's put a little bit, see how it's dark in here? Put a little bit of that lighter color in there. It's not quite as dark as the uh, this side. So let's put a little bit of that with maybe a little bit more yellow in it. And we'll just swipe that in. It's kind of a muddy green color. Two boat there, I guess. And I'm just going to flick it up. And that's pretty well the start. So it looks kind of um, funny. 
messy. You're wondering how the heck is it going to turn into the forest? It's all about the layers. So the one important thing we have to do right now is dry it. So if you got earphones on, maybe I'll mute. Just a minute, mute. I'll mute while I dry. All right, so now we are going to start from the next level, which is the far distant through there, through these trees, there's um, leaves and that type of thing. Now, this can be done in many, many, many different ways. And if you have a uh, fluffy brush, um, this is a uh, Terry Harrison Foliage PX brush. These are great. Um, you can get them in different sizes. I don't know if he actually, I know he passed away a couple of years ago, so I don't know whether they still sell his brands. Um, this is the Deerfoot Stippler too. <clears throat> or if you have a bristle brush, that will work. Um, so what you do, I'm going to get a different palette. So I'm going to put this aside for now. And take this paint off. So you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to add the there's some dark and light colors behind here. I don't know if you can see that. So past this tree, can you see that there's dark, but we already have a lot of dark. So we're going to get uh, greens and yellows and start putting those in. And they're small marks, so they're not, it's distant. So it's, small um, leaves. So some yellow and I have some green here. This is uh, wed wed wedge wood green or you can make your own. What would you like me to do? Um, you can make your own by just adding uh, blues and green and yellows to it. So let's try that. I'll show you. I'm going to get a palette knife just so I can mix a few greens. And you want different shades of green. It's kind of a blue green, so we'll just add a little more yellow. And you could add a little bit of white to that too. Do I have white on that other palette? Yes, I do. So a little bit of white to 
do that and we'll lighten it up a bit. It's a nice green. Maybe a little bit more yellow. A little more. I want it fairly bright. Okay, that's a nice green. Now I want to do a yellow, and the yellow is almost on the green side, so a bit, just a smidge, because this, um, blue is fairly potent. That's a nice green. You could almost use a little bit of white in there. So let's put a smidge of white over here so we can dab into that. better. Nice and bright. And then I'm going to just add a little bit more yellow over here. I use most of it. And I'm just going to add a bit of white to that one yellow area. So just to give it a little bit more light color. There. So I have three different colors here, plus the uh, white. So what we're going to do is um, take note of where all the yellowy colors are. So they're right around in here. There's even, I don't know if you can see that, even in between these sun rays, there's some in there too. So we'll have to put some in there. I can even see some here. And these sun rays are going to be fairly um, opaque when we put them on. So I'm just dabbing my brush, dab off. And this can take a little bit of, of time. So being that there's white in this, and, and I'm just lightly tapping. Now it's fairly thick in there, so just look at, at your reference and, and see where it's just goes down to about here. Let's see. Goes down to about there. Goes into here, up here. And I'm just doing the light part um, over on this side first. Now you could use a uh, sponge too if you wanted to. And then I'm going to get into some of this green color. Up in here, it's more green. And I'm not worried too much about um, if there's any pattern to this stamping, because I know a lot of this is going to be covered. But I do want some of it showing through. So then I can uh, just a little bit over here. And a little bit in here. And then we over here, this is where this color starts. And I didn't clean my brush. Oop, got some. Got some uh, blue on there. It's okay. Can work with it. Overlap a little bit. And down into here. We will add other colors. Okay. And then a little bit more in here. Up 
in here. Keep swiping that blue. And then right in here also is that green. Now you, I'll show you what a, um, a bigger brush will do also. Let's see, do I have it in here? Yep. These, these brushes that are just from the, um, they're cheap. They're great because they flare out. So you can give a little bit of a bigger pattern. But use them dry. Don't wet them. So it's a lot more dense in there. And there's actually some of that really dark um, mossy green in here that we used for the bottom part. Use some more of that right up in here. It's pretty thick. There is a few... Um, And then it goes down into here. And then there's uh, way back there, there's a bit of kind of yellow right in here. Goes up in into the top here a little bit. Not much. And I think that's it for now. Maybe a little bit of that brownish color, but lighter. So add a little bit of white to that mix. Right in here, I see a little bit of lighter colors. You could even put a few in there. All right, so it looks blotchy and um, a little odd. But it gets better with each level, each step. All right, so we've done the way far back, and now it's time to uh, add a few trees. So you see very thin tree uh, in here. There's a few. You can see most of them there, though. See, they're thin. And we're just going to use a brown. So we're going to make up a brown. Um, we don't have to get too detailed with those, almost brownish black. Uh, get my palette knife again. So we have, let's see, we have that green brown. We put a little bit. Let's see if we can make a brown with this. Let's put a little bit of red with that. I'm not sure how they made this green brown, so that's not bad. Actually, let's use this up. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, maybe a little bit of. That's a good brown. If you have uh, a medium to dark brown color, umber would be one, or um, 
Van Dyke Brown is another, would be good. I could use that. I'm just going to use a flat. This is a, does it say half inch? It's just a cheap one. And I'm going to start over here. And we're looking at the far, far, far back ones there. So we're going to start right around here and just take your, go all the way up. You can use a uh, round brush too, depending on how um, thin you want to go. I'm just going to put some of these in first. Don't go um two down here because it's farther back so they're sitting back and we can also put um leaves over top of these so don't worry that you're covering up all your leaves that you just did that's part of the process so we'll put some more of these in so we got quite a few actually in here and we'll put the limbs on too don't worry about it too much right now. Just put some of those tree limbs in. Okay. Block user. Really? All right. Um, you reported it? Okay. Um, I can't, I'm on StreamYard, so I can't turn them off. <laughs> I'm going to get a thinner, there we go. This is a, um, Terry Harrison Golden Half Rigger. So we're going to add some this will make smaller further back and these are good for making branches also so we want quite a few and some of them were going to be a little on the wonky side so you can do that they're not all perfect Uh, I see there's and we're going to be covering some of these up with uh, leaves and that type of thing too so don't get too upset with uh, going over top of things this is all about the layering Some more in here. Maybe a few bigger ones. That. They can be leaning. Just have fun with it. Because the sunshine's going to be coming in here too, so it's going to white out some of this. I, I think I'll even go into this part. Oop, got some. Because we are going to um, add other, well, these ones I want fairly small. Although there is going to be a lot of light coming through, so. And you can start some of these above the bushes so that it looks like 
the bushes are covering them. You could take a um, Posca marker too, if you wanted to make a bunch of really small ones. It's good practice, though, for um, trying to control your line width by using a rigger. Because a lot of this will be covered. All right, now it looks like just a bunch of craziness right now, but you will see. Now I can see some branches, so what you can do is just take the tip of your brush and just go lightly and make a bunch of squiggles on the top part. This is going to be um, covered with some leaves also. But you want some of those branches to be shining through. So there's, there's short strokes, medium strokes. Okay, and now you can put a few in here. I wouldn't get too carried away with this side because this is the brightest side for the shine of the sun. So you probably won't see a whole lot. Plus, we're going to be doing a bunch of those too. All right. Okay, so right in here, so in the center, it's a little bit on the brownish side. So we're going to make a brown a little bit lighter than this one now. So we'll add some white to that mix. Some yellow. Let's see if we can get a brown going here. Blue, red. A bit yellow. Uh, this one's not really black. It's more of a green black. Hmm, I'm not getting too many colors in these craft paints it's hard to get a brown so maybe I'll just use a brown let's see what we got here okay we have a dark umber here that I can add to hopefully doesn't have uh, too many other pigment colors in it. Hey, Kim. You never know with these paints. Let's see. I'm just going to add some brown in here. See what we get. A little bit of white.
Yeah, a little bit of red, I think. Just to red that up. So I am going to take my stippler again, make sure it's good and dry. And I'm just going to tap in this area. I can add a little bit of dark and light to this, really. So I'm kind of adding dark and light color to this. Just tapping, going into that green, but leaving some of the green. And more or less keeping this brownish color down on this side. Make it, um, bring it forward. I'm going to add a little bit of dark color in here. Just, just stamp it. We will go over top of this again with greens and beige colors for the leaves moss that type of thing okay now I'm going to take our brushes again and I'm going to take a little bit more I want a nice um, brown color, kind of a medium brown, I guess you could say. Different than this here. And we're going to make some bigger trees now. So we want to put more pressure down on our brush. And there are some a little bit smaller. They're not all the same size. And we'll just add some of these. And we're going to add some other colored because they're not all the same color. Different tree um, varieties have different colored bark. So it's always good to um, put in a few different colors of bark. So put another one in here. Like that. And let's mix a little bit more of that up. This time it's going to be a little bit different color, more on the gray side, I guess. And we'll add a few of these in. So a lot of times you'll get um, certain types of trees like beech are kind of a silver color. You could even add put in um, pop, poplars have a different and white birch different 
different colors for different trees. Uh. Hey, Devin. All right, so let's dry that and we'll see what we can do next. I'll meet. All right, so now we're gonna put in a few leaf colors. So I'm gonna use uh, this brush here. I have a few other brushes. Uh, what else could I use? Well, we use this one. It's available in your um, hardware store. It's just uh, cheap brush. So we want to get back into those yellows and greens. So I have a few of that green, a bit of that green left on my palette. So I'm going to use that. And I'm just looking at uh, the distant trees in here. And they're kind of You can even um, look at the how they're falling. You can see this here. So just take a look at some of the. There's some little trees here. Might have a few. A few on the top. There's a few in here. Over here. Um, we'll put some in there, a few more over here, crossing these. So I'm not, uh, it's past these that I'm looking at right now. Now I'm not going exactly with my reference photo. I'm adding uh, a few things that aren't there, but I like that. So I want to make it as bright as possible. Even here. I think there's a few more in there. And I'm going to put a few in here too, even though that um, sunshine that's going to come in here is going to cover most of this. But... but see how this brush makes awesome distant foliage. It's just a scruffy old thing. Okay, and there. Uh, is there any more I want to? Maybe a few in there. So there's, a, I've just kind of um, used a bit of, of that yellow mix. And then I also have this, um, let's mix a little bit more of that green up. So there's the yellow, but with a little bit of blue in it. 
a little more on the green side. And you can add some white to it if you want. If it's too um, dark. We do need a little bit of that darker green here and there. Because it's not always just uh, one color. There's always some either reds or orange. It depends on the what color you want to do yours. You can change yours up. You can make it oranges and yellows if you wanted to, or reds, whatever. <clears throat> um, let's see, what else can we do here? There's a little bit more on the bottom here. I'm going to put a little bit of that right in here. Uh, I think that should do. All right. Do you guys um, want me to zoom in more or are you happy with that? Okay, let's do a few very, very thin. Um, see these branches here over top? I want a few of those in. So I've got this um, liner brush again, and it's this is um, what was it? Black green, I believe. Yeah, black green craft paint. And get it kind of a watery consistency so you can uh, do fairly thin lines. You could use a Posca marker too, but I just want a few. Well, maybe even smaller than that. Let's get a smaller brush, smaller liner than that. I don't think that's quite small enough for what I want. I have a smaller one. Hmm. Liner brush. Oh, there's one. The liner brush you do have to wet. Oh, this one's kind of wonky. Let's see if it works. So, yeah, that's a little better. I'm just skipping through. I'm not going to put a straight line. Just to kind of skip through a little bit. There is quite a few of these. They cross each other and There's quite a few. Even into here, you can put some in. Try to make some different um, thicknesses too. You can always go back and paint some of those um, trunks if you don't like the branches going over it. That's easy enough to do. So don't worry about going over your tr your tree branch or your tree trunks. I 
Uh, so these are part of the pine tree limbs. Okay. I've got to go. Okay, Z, have a fantastic day. Oh, you, you're trying a new Zoom? <laughs> Are you on your um, phone? Isn't that one of the new features that they have out? Okay. All right, now um, what I want to do is I'm going to put in some of this sunlight. This is scary part. And I'm going to take a dry brush and I want white. I'm taking a gesso. And dipping my, this is a Deerfoot stippler. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to that white. I don't want it white, white. And then I'm going to squeeze some of it off. And then right about here is where the sunlight's going to come from. And it's going to go straight down. So it's fairly, it's fairly bright. We'll make the bigger ones first. And then I'm going to take another brush. Where is it? A smaller brush. This is another stippler. Make the smaller lines. It's more about dry brushing than you don't want a really heavy line. No, in the beginning you do, but um, as you go down, it gets softer. Now I can take some of that out. And you could probably use your napkin too. Or not your napkin, your paper towel. But this is going to be... Fairly bright right in here. Scary. Soften them. Uh, 
Let's, let's dry it a bit. I'll mute. All right, I gotta get a paper towel or a baby wipe. I'm gonna soften this one up a bit. Ah. That's good. And where did I put that brush? Oh. Hey, Dorothy, no notifications. Geesh. I don't know what to tell you, Dot. There's some smaller ones. They're not all wide. There's some smaller ones. Like that. This one. I'm just smearing it with a paper towel. Right in here is pretty bright, this one here. You can hardly see anything in there like that. Oop. Like that. All right, so let's dry that. All right, 
Uh, I just want to put a little bit more on there. Just in the center here, it needs to be brighter. Nice bright white. Now what we want to do is we start putting our trees, these main trees that are in front of most of this light. So the light isn't catching the side of this uh, tree. Um, now this one we could have, well, we still could put this one in and then uh, put a little bit more of that sun through it. So we want to take our tree colors and our brush, thicker brush, hey Pam, so we're going to add a little bit of this, a little bit of it's going to be a little lighter than what we have in the background. So you can do that. And you can put this one in here. And this comes. Down like that. And then we put the other one here. It's a little thicker. These are um, cedars, or not cedars, um, pine trees. And this one has a stem. And then there's a big one here. Actually, there's another one right here. A smaller one and then a big one right here. This one kind of comes almost to the very bottom of the page. Like so. And then we have that one, and then we have, well, we could put one in here, a thicker one. Like so. There's actually one behind it, but it's lighter. Let's add some of this stuff behind it. Like that. And some of them are showing a little bit more. 
on the top. Now we can start putting a few um, branches, that type of thing. So we have like this one here. Um, so we could, let's see, that one actually is behind some of the that's too watery just put a few limbs I can always go back over top a little bit with white. And because the, the tree is in front of that light, you're seeing all these little sticks from the pine tree. So you can put some of those in. This is what gives you the depth. These, there's actually that one there. This isn't exactly the tree, all how all the trees are kind of uh, changed it up a little bit, but that's what you do. So wherever there's, um, let's see, I think I can put this in a little bit darker there. And brush. I'm just going to take my a wet brush. brush up there a little bit. So it's still getting some of that sunlight on it, but you're seeing a little bit more of the shape. Okay. I guess we could put a few more in. Much water on my brush. Okay, now this one here, that's the bigger tree right here. I'm just going to cover that bush area because that would be in behind it. I 
take that. And let's sharpen up the edge of this tree here. And a few little knobbies sticking out. It's a pine tree, so some of the limbs and stuff would be sticking out a little bit. Oh, where's that other brush? Hmm. I'll use this one. Oh, that's not going to work. Shorter brush. knobs, there's little bumps in the bark. We can add um, textures once this is dry. And with this one here, we can add little lumps and bumps on the Hey, Jilly. All right, so now we can add um, some of this brown um, texture. So kind of a, mm, it's almost got a bit of orange in it. It's like a peachy color, I guess you could say. Um, Let's see, we could take this green off of there. Add a little bit of this red here. Hmm. White. A little bit of yellow. again. So let's make sure it's not too wet. Get clean that. Okay. And make want a lot on my brush because then it gets globby because I want it fairly um, loose. So now we can take a little bit of black and a little bit of just dab. Now, wherever the light is shining, you're going to want a little bit more of the uh, color, lighter color on the forest floor. 
and then darken the other. with a little bit of yellow. If you want a darker color, see, that's going to be good. Yep. Everywhere else. And you can add um, different colors to it. give it there's a lot of different um, hues to the floor you can see different right in there let's see right in here would be brighter it's darker right I get some more brown. Sash Fulton. Oh, wrong brown. Hey, Lena. Good to see you. Oh, no problem. <laughs> you got to eat. some shadowed areas so you can just take a look at you know shadowed areas now your trees would be casting shadows so you gotta remember that so this one here would be casting a shadow array around there this one a little bit more on there I'm going to put a shadow cast, but we are going to put more um, fern and that type of thing in. And there's like shadows cast by the trees above like the leaves and stuff like that. So you gotta think of that type of thing. And let's put a little red in there. Just a bit of red. Or burgundy. Just here and there. A little bit of color in the, maybe a little bit of leaf. difference more in the foreground than the back like that and and a little bit more brighter okay so we got um bit more brighter there and we have the odd spot there right in here that Dappled sunlight. Okay. Now let's put in. See how they the some of the 
trees in the back, more or less in the back, but it does, it's not catching the light from the sun. But it's um, kind of a bluish green, and it's the le the um, pine trees. So you can add a few, and, and it's kind of draping. Um, these are old pine trees, probably. So it's kind of draping these um, segments. So let's see what we can conjure up here. Just a few. I'm going to add some yellow to that, too. Oh, too much yellow. Maybe even a bit brown in there. Just have to experiment to figure out how you would draw or paint something. And these, um, let's see, do they have any in there? Mm, there's not really any. Um, well, we'll put some in anyways. Any, um, that type of evergreen in certain areas, but it's yours. Picture, you can do whatever you want. Change it up. Then we can add the Add the um, stems to it, so connect some of this, just so that it gives it, and this is too, too uh, thick, let's try the thinner one. And you can use your Poscas for this too, you don't have to, I'm just connecting it to a, uh, a tree of some sort. So that it kind of belongs. Um, okay. All right. Now there is. Um, a little bit of difference on these uh, bigger trees here that are in front. They're 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 not just brown. They have lumps and bumps and let's see, they have a lumps and bumps and different textures. So we can do that. And there's a light side on the left side of these mostly. So we can take a little bit, uh, probably um, kind of a yellowy color. And I'm just using the this brush again. And let's try um, here's a piece of paper. Let's try something. Why not? We'll try it on this one here. So I'm just going to go down the one side. And see what we can make. Or dab. Let's see. I don't know. This brush might be too thick for this, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's too thick. Okay, that didn't work. Let's see what else we can do. Let's fix that up a little bit. Some brown. Brown on this side. Ooh. There we go. A little darker on one side and a little lighter on the other. And little lumps can have a darker area. You can just put little marks in the paint, too. Rough it up. Or scratch. Let's see what happens if we scratch. Where's that one brush? Oh, we'll use this. So if we scratch in our paint. Yeah. We'll get this oh, too wet. To let that one dry, I think. And I'm a nut for detail, as you know. But the, the ones closest, you can put detail in because it's something you would see. So there's nothing wrong with that. So it's just a matter of changing the um, hue to make it lighter or darker. I have a little bit of a marks on it. You would dot. This one, this dry brush. Let's try to dry brush. So that one's fairly dry. So I'm going to take that color. Just dry brush it just along the side. So it's Lightly. Okay. Try that on here a bit. A little on there. And mostly um, concentrating on the one side where the light would be shining on it. This one's kind of in the middle, so we'll put it down on both sides. Just 
Okay, and then this one would be on this side, on the right side, because it's on the other side of the page, and the light's on the right. Same with this one would have some. stronger there I think all right and then let's think it needs a little bit more bright um, yellowish just where the light is kind of Shining on it needs to be a little brighter there. Oh, that's gonna be too bright, maybe. I don't know. Nope, I don't like that. Let's take that off. Okay, Devin, have a good one. a little bit of white with this yellow, I think. And yeah, that's better. Here's what I wanted. That's where the sun is um, hitting those areas. There would be um, a lot brighter in there. So we can put bit of dry brushing in there. Like that. Makes a difference. All right, so now we can put um, a few of the stuff on the ground here. So we've got some little patches of little trees starting to grow up there. So we can put a few of those in. So just take our dark color first. So that's black green that I have here. My script liner and uh, we've got one right in here we could put in so like that and then just put a few little thingy madooies put one in here too and maybe one in there, one in there. And 
use um, a real colorful one in here and one in here. Okay, so we're going to make really bright green paint. So you want a yellow again and some touch of blue. Real bright green. Maybe a little bit of white. Lighten it up. Okay, and then just take a look at how they're, they're almost the green is showing as the um, stem. So I'm just taking the point, the edge of my flat liner here and just using that. Doesn't even have to be So they won't be perfect because they're wild, so they'll be kind of wonky. Okay. And that's shining on it, so. And then let's do another one. Let's put some um, of this grass stuff in. So we can take that brush again. Make sure it's good and dry. Take all the water out. We've cleaned it. Oof. Got a bunch of paint on my hand. That's the garbage. Okay. Good and dry. Oh, it's damp. Good enough. Get some of that green on the very end of my fluffy brush. And we can add a few bright sections. Where it would be super bright. You might need a little bit more. There. So Maybe a little more yellow in there. And maybe a few in here. It doesn't have to be a lot. But kind of pay attention to your... Uh, your light streams that are coming in here. Um, it looks a little better if you're paying attention to that and you know that, yeah, those um, have a bright area. Uh, And then I'm going to take this brush here. I'm going to just tap it in a little bit. And 
And then some of these trees here have um, moss. Let's put a little bit of moss. Growing up the tree. much darken the area a little bit no I don't like that I think I need to use a smaller brush maybe my scrubber A darker green on the olivey side. on that one. And this one here. Hmm, that's not working. Where so I have to take some more water out of this brush. It should work. Am I driving you guys nuts? There. Well, I just, I like details, but I want to get it right. That's the only ones that had the moss on it. Okay. Um, just tap in some dark area here. Moss was a little bit too much there. There, that's a little better. And with this one. A little bit. Tap, tap, tap. And some green again. So green, the yellow, yellow and blue. Make a green 
me. A little bit of red in it to gray it down, I think. And then I'm going to just put that. There's one. That's two grayed. We'll brighten it up a little bit. I'm going to use my liner, I think. make another uh, little sapling of a spruce tree or pine tree, whatever. A little bit of white or yellow in it. It's catching the light. Just change a bit of that color on this one, just a smidge here and there, just so it doesn't look too uh, similar. A few dots green. Um, what else? We can put a few more, a few more leaves in this area. Um, let's see, kind of a mishmash. I guess it should be dark though. Don't want it too um, light because then, yeah, that's better. I'm just adding um, different levels of shadow and light. Just gives it more um, interest if you do that. And let's see, what else can we do? Here? Oh, yeah, I was going to fix that. Um, the uh, one tree here it's in front of the bright light this one and it needs to be a little bit um, focused out see how it's covering here so take some of that white again that was that's not totally clean And we'll just swipe it. Maybe even that one a little bit too. Yeah. And then just take my baby wipe my finger and swipe it in a little bit you could even use just your baby wipe if you wanted to
like so. Now, let's dry it. All right, I'm going to put a little log laying down also, just because, because I can. Brush. It'll be dark. And let's put it. A few branches here and there. And that will help you with um, seeing the floor as um, not just a bunch of fluffy stuff in front of it. Sometimes you need, you can make some bushes too. There's all kinds of, see there's all kinds of sticks and whatnots and depends how much you want to put in. And I always like to highlight these too, though. Because you will see them, um, especially if they're on the light area. You could also lighten some of these. Branches that you have on the tree too. Here and there. Don't have to put them all in, but some of them. Probably have some kind of a highlight on them. Again, that's, you know, depends on how much do you want to put into it. Too bright. Just 
put in a little bit of um, highlight on some of these. Just make them up a little bit brighter. Change them up a little bit. You can go on and on and on <laughs> with um, finishing this. There's so many ways of adding to this. Like maybe there's a little hole in the bush here. That's a hill. Darken areas. all kinds of ways of playing with this. And it's a lot of times when you're doing this type of painting, especially landscapes, a lot of times it's a suggestion of something. It's not detailed or necessarily uh, can tell exactly that's what it was. It's quite interesting. <laughs> A little bunny. I could. Anything could go in here. Bright brights on some of these you could put in. Whites. It's a little bit too bright there, but It's interesting to think about the where the sun's shining, how bright is it, um, 
what would it be reflecting as far as um, your, say, your tree leaves? Would they be almost white because the sun's so bright? Yeah, there's so many different um, things you can do. It's endless. This is when I get carried away. When I play with the, the details. Can get uh, can get crazy. I admit it. What do you like when you paint? What's your favorite part? Well, I think, I think I'm done. I could go on and on, but this is supposed to be for uh, beginners, so depends how much you want to put in it. There we go. So that's just with craft paint, more or less. And not very many colors either. Basically, red, green, and, and yellow are primaries, and white with a little bit of raw umber. And then that was all I used. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you'll give it a try. I like what one of my tutors called the the knitting all the finishing bits and brings it all to yeah the detail thanks dot so that's my fall basically <laughs> the fall last one painting and next week we'll probably start to get into mm, some winter stuff um, let me know what you want. Do you want landscapes? Do you want flowers, birds? Or do you want something like I did with uh, characters, like this type of thing? <laughs> those are cute. those are fun. Um, leave a comment down below and then uh, I'll be able to see it and then uh, see if I can get some stuff put together so I can try it out for you guys. That's why I'm doing this for you guys. <laughs> so give me some ideas what you want to learn or maybe you want just uh, how to paint skies or how to paint clouds like individual things. If that's the case, then uh, let me know. But other than that, get your sketchbooks out, do some drawing, 
Have a fantastic fall weekend, and we'll see you on Tuesday. Have a good one, everyone.